Well, when I'm working with someone, the first thing that I have to realize is that we have our separate realities and then we have a reality that we can create together. So it's like we create this special unified field or this relativity of consciousness warp bubble. And so someone comes and interacts with me and they may have their, their beliefs, their experiences, their fears, their expectations, maybe their conditions. And then I have my own conditions called two medical degrees and too much information and too much left brain and, and maybe wondering, can I, is something going to happen? Can I do something? What you have to do is step out of time and space, even for just the blink of an eye. When you do that, then you access something that the physicists have called the wave function, which exists beyond time space, and that encodes for an infinite number of possibilities. Now, what happens is we collapse those possibilities back into the actuality of, well, did what I want to have happen happen? Is something different? Do I know what happened? And then based upon our consciousness model, we will reconstruct events to fit what we think should be true. Uh, unfortunately, most of the breakthrough experiences in human consciousness that I've been able to track have been going beyond what's true, asking a new question, and then going into an empty space and waiting for an answer. So what I do whenever I interact with someone is I actually hear what they're saying or notice what I notice. Sometimes it's just a matter of looking at a person and picking something to reference, to play with. And then I go into kind of a soft focus, expand the field of my feelings so that I'm not so self-contained and let go of my rational mind just in the sense, if it wants to chatter, that's fine. That doesn't affect anything. But just so that it knows that it's on a short leash, it can chatter all at once as long as it doesn't interfere with the process. So when I say the interesting things that happen for me are actually up and to the left, for some people it's up and to the right, I'm talking about the spatial awareness of our energy fields and how we actually organize our life experience spatially 360 degrees around us. So once you get the idea that that's possible, then you start to understand, well, where did the information that I really needed to know come from? And you get a feeling, well, it was up there. Now, how do you know it's up there? Because you find you're actually looking up there and kind of behind you, and you can almost feel the, the distance. Maybe it's three and a half feet out, and it has a certain tone and quality and texture to it. Everybody has that for themselves, so they just have to learn how to trust it. <laughs> this neck injury here, that all that weirdness right in there, yeah. all that calcified garbage and so on. Yeah. Now, have you been to doctors, chiropractors, blah, blah, no. blah for this? No? It's just been hanging just out suffer. there? Yeah. Just you just suffer? Suffer, suffer. <laughs> suffer and suck-a-dash. <laughs> <laughs> Cartoons are good. Cartoons are a very good resource. <laughs> Suffer no more. <laughs> Exit stage left. Happens to Mercatroid. <laughs> yeah, sometimes people go, well, I don't know what happened, you know? I just, uh, I went and he spoke and he laughed a lot and people went unconscious and I'm not sure how that was useful or what I learned. <laughs> I said, if you can't learn to laugh more and just have fun for no good reason, then uh, why should you learn anything, right? You're not worth teaching. You know? <laughs>